Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're doing a moving camera or motion tracking effect for video in Reaper. So this is an effect you've probably seen a lot before. This is very popular on commentary channels. You know, when they're holding something up or moving their hands around or zooming in on their face, they move left and right and it zooms and follows their motion. It's actually really easy to do in Reaper as well, provided you have the right tools meaning the right code for the video processor. And I have all this stuff, uh, several of the presets that I'll use today come from my video tools course, which you can see here on my website, reaperblog.net. You can get this course for $30 and it includes 14 tutorial videos and 25 presets for the video processor. And for a really good overview and in-depth uh, tutorials on video editing techniques, this is the course for you. So let's go into Reaper and let's look at our source footage here. So this footage came from a Q&A video a few months ago. And in this one, I'm going to hold up a microphone. And for this effect, we're going to move the camera around to follow that microphone movement. So I'll just trim this a little bit to get to about the right area. This is called keyframe automation or animation in other programs, and Reaper just calls it automation. So we're going to call up the video processor on the track. So I'm just going to adjust the colors real quick um, due to these, uh, the light I'm using being kind of like a, a little bit of a green tint on it. So I'll leave it like that. All right, so we've got the uh, the colors adjusted. Now we're going to another instance of the video processor, and this time I'm going to bring up the um, video controls preset. This one has all the basic functions um, for scaling, position, cropping, opacity, and we're going to use three of these controls and uh, automate them. There's also a keyboard shortcut that I use a lot, which is just advancing the cursor, um, the edit cursor by one frame increments. I'm using a script from X-Rame for this, move edit cursor to next frame, and the opposite, move edit cursor to previous frame. I have those on option right. And then I have another one that does 15 frames forward and backwards, because I work in 30 frames per second, uh, you know, that's half a second. But the, the main thing is that my edits are going to be snapped to the frame grid. Here's where I'll start my edits. I'm going to go into the latch mode. And I'm just going to touch the scale control to bring up that envelope. It's put in a point um, right there. And that's going to be kind of our anchor point for the start of this automation. So I'm going to advance three frames forward. And I'll just start automating here with doing like scale, horizontal, and vertical. I'll jump ahead uh, three frames. And I'll just keep on doing this. Maybe I'll go a little bit further in. Get my vertical down as low as possible without uh, cutting off that and kind of bring this hand into the center of the frame. Go three frames forward, zoom in slightly, horizontal slightly, and vertical. And that's basically all this is, is just repetitive editing a few frames at a time. We can do that with these controls here in the video processor, or there's actually a trick to directly edit this by dragging in the video window. Let's set that up because it's going to save a lot of time. So we're going to take the uh, horizontal position, just touch that, go to param, go to learn. I'm going to right click here and video window drag X. And we want this to be only when the track 
is selected. So that if we're doing that, uh, then we can, let's say, add in text and drag that around. So we've got that one, and then vertical, I'm gonna touch that, param, go to learn, right click, video window drag Y, and again, only when track or item is selected. Oh, one other thing we need to do is send MIDI CC control messages when mouse dragging in video window, just make sure that's turned on. And now we jump ahead three frames. Um, we can just drag in here and adjust that. Um, I could also set up the scaling uh, using that, and I often do that with mouse wheel, uh, but for now we'll just continue on this way. Three frames, and let's move that up a little bit. Move that to the right, to the right. And with this drag function, you can get very precise. It's very easy to keep things aligned. This is a little time consuming, but I think it's a really cool effect. I think it's well worth doing. All right, and here is where we'll start zooming out. So I'm just gonna touch the, the scale to put in a point there. And then let's start zooming out here. Actually, let's just completely snap that to the starting point again at that point. I'm going to switch over to read mode. And we can play this back from the beginning. So for something quick like this, it just takes a couple minutes. One other thing I'll point out here with this, um, I find the smoothest looking um, automation for the things like this is the slow start end shape. So my default point shape is slow start end. I find that that's the most natural movement. Let's just convert all of these points to a different shape. So I've got this uh, as keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna select these and then make them all square points. And here, see the difference pretty clearly, I think. Very choppy. Now let's set these all to linear. And so there's no sort of speed ramping between the different points. Um, my favorite is the slow start end, and it looks like this. And it's a little bit closer to sort of handheld movement. And if you're not going really quick like this, you know, editing every three frames, um, that can be a lot smoother. Uh, if you're doing every 15 frames or something like that, moving around, then it's a lot smoother. You, you really notice that slight speed change uh, in the first frame and the last frame sort of thing. Let's take this effect one step further and uh, automate the position of a label for this microphone. So I put in an empty MIDI item and I'm going to add in again my video processor and put in my text overlay with drop shadow. and. In here, we can easily customize things like color. So I've got RGB color codes here. I'm just going to make this yellow. I'm going to choose a different font. I like that one. That font is actually Verdana Bold. There are 12 options for fonts built in, or you could type in your own. We're using an empty MIDI item as a container for the video processor. MIDI items have an effects chain, and that's why I use them for that. I'm going to right click and go to item properties. And then in here, I can rename the item. So the microphone is an SM57. So we'll just put that in there. OK. And that will automatically change the text on the screen. And I'll just do that MIDI learn that I did earlier but now with the text. So and this is only going to be active when the 
the track or item is selected. Okay, so when I have this item selected, I can actually move it into position. So let's just quickly go through this and automate this. I'll set my track again to latch mode. I'll just touch these parameters to get them set up automatically. And then I'll drag around in the video window and I'll advance this uh, a few frames at a time to get it into position. So I want this like right there. And then three frames ahead, I'll adjust that. I'll just basically follow this around, kind of getting this point of the S aligned with that point there. And now if you always do, three frame increments, you could definitely set up a, a keyboard shortcut just to run that action three times. The main thing is like beginning and end of a movement, getting those points right, and then it's automatically interpolated between And then we're out. OK. So again, switching this to read mode. I can play this back. And I like how I sort of like flick that uh, the text off of the microphone with that last movement. So I'm going to show you one more thing with this, one other video processor preset from my bundle that you might find really useful for this, the center line guide. It's just a cross in the center of the screen. I also have vertical and horizontal lines. If, um, But the idea is like, let's say you want the center of my glasses to be aligned with this movement. You kind of want that position of my head to be locked in um, as I move around. You can use the frame center guide or the horizontal or vertical lines and, and just position them as needed to kind of lock in that. And this is just a guideline. You can turn it off after, of course. Actually, I do want that frame center guide. And I will align that right there. And jumping a few frames ahead, I'll just keep dragging in here. And as I do this, it is writing in those automation points for whatever parameters I have touched. So this can take a little time or a lot of time, depending on how you want to do this. Let's actually do this in 15 frame increments. So every half a second, the camera follows my movement. And then we're done. OK, so let's set this up with read mode. I'll turn off that guideline. I just uh, turning that off there. And so that's a more of a subtle movement, but I think that works really well. So there you go, guys, a little tutorial on how you do motion tracking or moving camera effects in Reaper. It's pretty simple as long as you have these tools that make it easy, um, but you could definitely figure things out on your own if you prefer. The Video Tools course not only gives you these presets that make things easy, uh, tutorial videos to help you learn it, but it's also a great way to support what I'm doing with the Reaper blog. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.